Yo guys, it's Cyro. You already know that today I'm bringing you guys my week 6 TBU battle against Super Gassy and the New York Shelmets. Us, of course, in charge of the LA Galuxery. And, um, yeah, so this is a battle that I had for the TBU, obviously. And, um, if you missed the team builder that was uploaded yesterday, I will try to remember to leave a link to it in the description below. So you can see the team that we are bringing to try and take on Super Gassy. And uh, this was a match that I I was kind of confident in until I finished recording my team builder. Once I recorded my team builder, I realized that all of the fire coverage that I originally had on my team somehow kind of got taken off in the process of team building. And something that I didn't really notice as a problem until uh, I was done recording with the team builder. And I had the battle immediately after the team builder. So I didn't have time to change my team or anything like that, which... I thought about maybe I should have done, like, maybe putting, like, a fire move on something like Mew or something. Um, but I guess at some point during the team building, I didn't really feel that it was necessary. And, um, as you'll see in this match, I kind of, I kind of come to regret that. And, um, you will see what I mean without giving too much away. Let's go ahead and get into what, uh, what Subagasi brought to this to this match, um, you can see the six that he brought was Mesprit, Hydreigon, Donphan, Ferrothorn, Azumarill, and Kofagrigus. Um, like I said in the team builder, I knew that if he, if he was bringing Hydreigon, it was it like had to be Scarfed if it was going to be effective. So I was like, that's a Scarfer right there. And I was assuming that Azumarill was going to be the choice band set. Um, I didn't know for sure, but I thought it would be. Um, but of course, there's only one way to find out. And then I was really disappointed to see both Kotfagrigus and Ferrothorn, um, realizing that both of those were going to be ridiculously hard to take out. So, let's go ahead and hop into this battle, because this was a decently lengthy one. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to lead off with. I actually almost led off with Mew so I could get Volt Switch stuff, but I actually decided to lead off with Whimsicott, feeling that it could 1v1 um, the most amount of things that he could start off with. And it turned out to be a great start, because I just go for Taunt. Um, sorry, the Club for Greeks can't do anything for me, and he tried to set up Toxic Spikes, but thank goodness that I had the Taunt, uh, and he couldn't do that. Um, I think this turn, I went for the safe Leech Seed as he goes into Ferrothorn. I could have predicted the Double Switch, but I just figured it was too early in the match to Double Switch. Um, and this is when I start realizing, hey, I don't have much to do damage to this thing. Um, so, I bring in the only thing that has fire coverage on my team, which is Granbull. Assuming that he was just going to get up Rocks or Spikes or something like that, he actually makes a Double Switch. Um, and he goes in to Chief Keef, which is going to be his Mesprit. Now right here, I knew, I knew he was going for rocks. I was like, I can go into Mega Beedrill, I can get a Mega Up, I can U-turn off, it would be great, I'll have momentum. But I just couldn't do it, and I just went into, into Mew. Um, I figured I could still get momentum and kind of keep it that way. And I do, I actually go for Volt Switch, um, which I didn't really think about, because I was just like, you know what, he's probably going to U-turn right here. So... Kind of stupid. I could have. I. I don't know. I thought that maybe I could have just uh, went into Mega Beedrill, and then I got my get a protect off, get my Mega off, and then I could just U-turn out of there, things like that. But I go ahead into into Exadrill because I figured that he was indeed going to U-turn. Um, I do reveal that I'm Mold Breaker right here, so probably tipping him off that I may be scarfed. At this point, he wouldn't know that I'm scarfing you, um, because the Mesprit does have leftovers, so. I could just be max speed or whatever. Um, but he actually just goes into Coffin Grievous, like the one thing that I can't do a lot of damage to. I knew he was going to go for a Willowis, so I was just like, I should go into Mew right here. And that way I can get him burned. But I was thinking I would rather get the Coffin Grievous toxic. So um, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go into something else. And he actually ended up going for Toxic Spike, so it kind of worked out. But um, Whimsicott was kind of my switch into Coffin Grievous. Um, and then, of course, I believe I tried to do the same thing. I assumed that he would switch out. So I don't think I taunted here, even though I probably should have. No, I did taunt. Okay, this part, this one I did taunt. I was just like, okay, cool, now Ferrothorn has to attack. I assume he either has to go for a Gyro Ball, or he has to assume that I'm going to think he's going to go for a Gyro Ball and go for like a Power Whip or something. So, um, at this point, I switch out into Soifon, the Mega Beedrill, knowing that neither one of those attacks can take this out um, as it is regular. I assumed that he was going to go for the Power Whip, actually. Um, I wasn't, I don't know, for some reason I just didn't think he was going to go for uh, Gyro Ball. I just wanted to get rid of the Toxic Spikes also, and that was a crit, um, which in the end didn't really matter, um, and you will, you will see. Uh, but I decided to get my Mega off here, um, and immediately go for a U-turn, knowing that I would be taking, um, damage, but you can see that this U-turn does still do a decent chunk. Now, judging by this damage, I was pretty easily able to conclude that this was a physically defensive, uh, variant 
of Ferrothorn, and I was just like, crap, the only fire coverage move I have is physical, and all my other things that do damage are also physical. So, I was looking in a pretty bad situation here. Um, but thankfully here, he actually, uh, stays in. Um, or let me, let me think, hold on, hold on. So he switches, or I switch out. I get power whipped, whatever, it is what it is. Um, I believe here he stays in as I go for fire punch, or he does protect. This turn, I believe I predict him to switch out, so I go for play rough. Um, but he protects, yeah, yeah, he protects, I go for play rough, um, because it could do damage to anything coming in, but, uh, he protected, which is fine, and I was just like, alright, well, I could either go for play rough again, predicting him to switch out, or I could just go for fire punch, um, and I decided to actually go for fire punch, because I was just like, I want to get damage on this Ferrothorn, and you will see that Hack starts to be a little bit on our side, um, as we go for the fire punch, and we get the burn, so... This is huge because now Ferrothorn can get worn down um, because I was having a really hard time taking this thing down. Um, so that is the thing. I thought about going for a another fire punch, but I thought he might save this for later. Or uh, I'm trying to remember. This battle did happen a couple days ago, so I am trying to remember all the turns in order as best I can. But he's going to go ahead and get back some recovery and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, so I knew a fire punch would take him out. Unfortunately, Grimble is starting to lose more health than I really wanted him to. I don't have any sort of wish passing or any way for Grimble to get more health back outside of like recovery recoveries. Um, so yeah, I do predict him to switch out, and I go into Exodrill figuring that I could take a hit in case he doesn't switch out. Um, and you will see here that he does actually switch, and he goes in to freaking. So this is still not ideal. I thought I was going for Toxic here, but I'm just like, you know what? He's probably going to Will-O-Wisp here. So I go into Mew. I figured, you know what? I don't need to worry about Toxic. I just need to start wearing this thing down in some way, shape, or form. He will wisp Mew. Mew gets to synchronize off. And so now the Cough of Grigus is burned, which is good for residual damage. Awesome. Um, I wasn't sure if he actually had any sort of Ghost type move. Uh, I figured I could live one if he did. And I believe this turn, I go for a Shadow Ball. And if I don't, then I just Volt Switch out. I'm trying to think. But he does he does switch out, he's not going to stay in, uh, risking that I can do a lot of damage. And he actually goes into Rickroll, which is his Don fan, as I yeah, go for the Shadow Ball. And this does pathetic damage. Pathetic damage. And I was just like, Mew, why do you have to be so bad? Actually, I figured that this was probably an Assault Vest um, variant based on that damage, but I was just like, dang it. Now I can't even touch the Don fan, because that was basically my most powerful attack to hit. On uh, anything uh, to it to hit Don fan. I didn't have like ice beam or anything like that. Um, but I switch into Whimsicott and he does get the knockoff, meaning my leftovers are off. Um, and this was still a good thing because he didn't really have switch ins to uh, Whimsicott anymore. Because if he switches in um, Ferrothorn, then I can do damage. Now, if I would predict that and went for Moonblast, that would have been great. However, I didn't. I was trying to get some health back. Um, he predicted the Giga Drain really nicely and went into Hydreigon. I was just like, the way he brought this in confirms that he's scarfed. So let me get up out of here. I don't know what he's going to go for. But he shouldn't be able to do a whole lot of damage to Hippowdon. So I go ahead into Hippowdon, and I was hoping, I was thinking that he's either going to go for a Fire Blast or a Flash Cannon. And he does go for a Fire Blast, and I was like, well, maybe he can miss one of these if he's scarfed into it, um, and I can get lucky that way. But he does less than half with the with the um, with the Fire Blast, meaning that I can stay in on this thing all day, and it's perfectly fine. Um, here I debated, I was just like, he could switch out, and then I can go for like a Toxic. Or whatever, but I believe this turn I decided to go for a slack off. That way I could uh, use this as a switch into um, Hydreigon later. Actually, that's a lie. I went for Stealth Rocks first. I think this turn though I might slack off. Mm. Although I know for a fact that he's going for uh, for Toxic Spikes this turn, or I assume that he, this turn that he would be going for Toxic Spikes. Um, but there really wasn't anything I could do about that. I really needed a Rapid Spin off because I couldn't really bring Beedrill in. You know, again, uh, I could, but I, I, I didn't really want to with Rock still in the field. Um, so, okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I didn't recover health there. I figured the leftovers wasn't enough. And I go into Whimsicott because that's just been my switch in to Calvagrigus. And he does indeed set up some Toxic Spikes. And I was just like, well, there they are. This is not cool, but it is what it is. And um, we're back into this situation, this, one, this 1v1. And I was just like, all right, well, now what do I do? Do I go for a Moonblast now, or do I try and Giga Drain? Do I just try and get Elite Sea, Taunt? Like, uh, there's so many options that I have. And I believe that I do go for the Leech Seed as he goes back into Ferrothorn? Nope, okay, he goes into uh, Mesprit as I go for the Leech Seed and Miss, I think. Yeah, 
So I missed. I could have gotten some health back. Um, Mesprit would have been a little bit less health, and it would have been cool. Um, and it would have been great. But either way, I saw that I could do a decent amount of damage. I figured that he uh, might just deter whatever. I saw the leftovers there, so I knew he wasn't. I knew he wasn't scarfed. Um, so, but I, I guess I never mind. I, I, I think I calped it, and I uh, Moonblast couldn't kill him. Um, I figured he'd be going for a fire punch, uh, f expecting Excadrill, um, and I think that's what he did do. Um, so I figured that he was a physical mess spread, so I just wanted to get an Intimidate off, and he did go for a fire punch. Um, I wasn't necessarily predicting fire punch, just like some sort of physical move. Um, and then here, here I believe he doesn't really have any switch-ins to Granbull, um, because Play Rough does lots of damage. So I believe this turn I go for a player off, and I'm running really low in health, which really sucks because if I could get the um, if I could get the intimidate off on Azumarill, it would be great. Also, if Gramble is at higher health, I could take on Azumarill a little bit better. But right now my team is just getting worn down, and Azumarill is just looking scarier and scarier every single turn because I knew that was just going to be he was saving it. He was saving it so it could be um, so it could just be brought in and it can sweep up. But I do go for the player off, and after the burn, I do know I, I outspeed. And I can uh, take him out. Now, I get the mummy ability. And this actually actually matters. And it does a good thing for me. Um, because Intimidate only works when I switch in. At this point, I was just like, Ramble's probably staying in until it dies. Um, this is probably what's going to happen. So I just go ahead and fire off another player off here, I do believe. Um, either a player off or a fire punch. Either one would take this thing out. I go for the safe player off, figuring that he might just let this thing die. Because he can't really bring it in uh, too much. And now... We live because it's just regular toxic. It's just regular poison, so toxic damage isn't doubling each turn, um, which is another good thing. Because if we were toxic, we probably would have been dead by now. But we just get the regular, get the regular damage. Um, he brings in a Zoomerill, and now I was just like, all right, well I gotta sack this thing off, and he goes for a waterfall. I'm assuming that he's banded, and the best thing that could have ever happened happens, and he gives himself mummy. <laughs> he gets rid of his own huge power, gets mummy. Something that he probably didn't think about, I didn't think about. I was just leaving Grand War Sack it off, but when I saw Mummy, I was just like, oh my gosh, I could bring in so many things right now. Um, so I assumed that he was going to switch out here, um, but I think I just needed health uh, pretty badly, and I think I did end up going for a Giga Drain here. Um, I'm, I, I don't actually remember. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. I did go for a Giga Drain. I wanted some health back, and... Yeah, that's the thing. Oh, that was a crit. I don't actually, you know, I don't think that crit mattered because a Moonblast definitely would have taken this thing out after after this because I was calking it. I'm pretty sure Moonblast did a really good chunk of damage. Um, I don't entirely know its spread, but I think I think we were good. Um, but I went for the Moonblast. Uh, he was actually going for Healing Wish, and then he could have Healing Wished into Ferrothorn, which I just would have no way to take out, and it would have been really, really bad. Um, but I take out the Mesprit with the Whimsicott, and things are looking pretty decent for me. However, I do notice that Azumarill is um, looking scarier and scarier. Now, of course, this thing is Scarfed. We already knew this, so I didn't really have a switch in. Um, but I do decide to go into Beedrill to sack it off. I thought, I was just like, I think I can live a uh, Rock Switch in. I can get rid of the Toxic Spikes, and that's exactly what happens. And then he takes me out. I was just like, well, maybe if he misses you know, whatever, then Hax would be on our side. Um, he would he would be scarfed out speed, so he would be able to try again for another Fire Blast. He would have had to miss two Fire Blasts for anything, you know, significant to happen. Um, so I just go, get a clean switch into Hippodom, get the sand up, figure I can get some residual damage on his team. This is the turn that um, I go for Slack Off, figuring he could attack me, and I get health back, or he could switch out, and I'm at full health. Um, either way, we should be fine. And he goes into Don Fan. Um, this Don fan, and this basically starts a show a showdown between um, getting rocks up and rapid spinning. So this is going to be kind of boring <laughs> um, right here, but it is getting towards the end of the battle. He rapid spins rocks away as I believe I go for a toxic, um, feeling that I just need to start wearing this Don fan down because I didn't have a lot of moves on my team to do a lot of damage to him anymore um, that I really wanted to do. I mean, Whimsicott could, but it was just hard to get that that uh, that matchup in against him. And he wasn't going to let Don Fan take a Giga Drain or anything like that. So I just toxic him. And then I was just like, well, he's. I don't know what he's going to do now, but let me just get Rocks back up. Um, I thought he might switch out. He actually just went for, for Knockoff. I went for Earthquake and he avoided. Meaning that I think I think this that means that this is Sandvale uh, Don Fan. I'm pretty sure that's an ability that it gets. So yeah, I've, I missed a freaking Earthquake. So that probably would have done, you know, 
it would have done damage and probably would have meant that Hippodon, I might have been able to get it out with a little bit less damage done to him. Might not have. But I was just like, man, I missed an earthquake. Okay. So that's the thing that happened. And this is where it starts the uh, the rapid spin stealth rock showdown. And I was just like, well, he outspeeds me. So, like, he, like I get the last laugh. You know, he can keep rapid spinning and doing all the stuff he wants. But I get up rocks after he, um, after he uh, does a move. Therefore, right here, I knew he was going to die to toxic, toxic damage. So he goes for earthquake as I go for Stealth Rock. And now, this turn, uh, he does die to Toxic, and basically what he's going to do here is he's going to bring in his Azumarill. And I ran the calc, and the only way Azumarill kills Hippowdon is if it is banded. And it has to be, like, Adam and Band. Actually, I, it could be Jolly or whatever, but it has to be banded. And I was just like, well, this is the time for me to confirm, because I don't have a switch into this thing anyway. And he, and then I know what he's locked, in, locked into if he does um, stay in or whatever. So... He goes for Waterfall, there's no crits, so therefore he is banded, and he's choiced into Waterfall. Meaning I can outspeed him with anything left on my team. So, I decided to go into Extra Drill. I think I was I was thinking that I wanted to go for a Rapid Spin, um, but I just wanted to get damage off on this thing. Um, and I knew that he didn't have a switch in, so I went for an Earthquake, as he actually brings in Ferrothorn. And Ferrothorn, despite being physically defensive, is not going to take an Adamant. Earthquake from an Exo Drill, and Ferrothorn is going to go down here. Now, um, at this point, we're getting towards the end game, and I'm starting to look at things, and I was just like, "crap!" I was just like, "Azumarill is just going to kill me here." Like, I don't, I don't know how I can, how I can stand up to this thing. Um, and so he chooses himself into Aqua Jet. I was just like, "Maybe I can live one." I think I misread the calc. I thought I could live one here, um, but either way, I didn't have a switch into an Aqua Jet anyway, so that was probably the only thing that I could do. Now. I go into Whimsicott, I was just like, wait a minute, I did the calc, I, there's a very small chance, alright, here, I kinda messed this up, but there's a small chance that I could live. I was at 26% health, an adamant aqua jet, banded aqua jet, does, has a min roll of 25%, meaning he had like a 90% chance to take me out, and he didn't take me out. If I would've went for Giga Drain on this turn, I would've been, I would've had more health, and I would have won this game. However, I just kind of threw off a lead seed to try and get some damage, and um... I end up letting Whimsicott die. So, if I would have known, you know, if I would have predicted the min roll, like, I was at 26%, he did 25% when that was the min roll, like, so he just got the worst, worst luck there, and now I have a Scarf Mew, and the only thing I can do to hope to win this game is I can live one Aqua Jet, and I have to choice myself into Dazzling Gleam. So, I was hoping that, like, Leech Seed and stuff like that might be enough damage, or if I got a crit there, then I could have won. Um, because I would have outsped the Hydreigon, however, we don't do enough damage to Azumarill, and, um, Azumarill is going to Aqua Jet us here, and that is going to be the game. So, this was an intense match. I think I played pretty well. I think had I had a, you know, a little bit more, um, I think just more special attackers, honestly, or a better special attacker, would have really helped, because I just didn't have much to do damage to Kofagrigus. I didn't have fire coverage to take out Ferrothorn. I was having I was having trouble doing damage to his team, and he brought a bulky team. So the team prep was odd for sure. Um, Mega Beedrill didn't do a whole lot except for get rid of Toxic Spikes, which is fine. Um, but I felt like there's probably a mon or two that I could have changed to maybe help the outcome of this battle. But that's all hindsight. The end of that battle, um, I I guess I could have won knowing that I live on one HP. I could have went for Giga Drain. He would have been at a low enough health to where I could bring in Mew go for Dazzling Gleam, it would have killed Azumarill, and then it would have O-Code um, Hydreigon, because I was Scarfed and I would have outsped it. So, given that, I could have won, however, I don't really feel, I don't really regret that, um, because I feel like he played better anyway. I feel like, uh, like Gassy played better than me. Um, I, when it came to the hacks, it was slightly in favor on my side um, than it was his. There was more of the stuff that mattered for me than it did for him. Um, mostly like the burn on the Ferrothorn, if I didn't get that, <laughs> I don't know if that thing would have ever died. So there's things like that that I just, f I feel like he deserved that win, and so therefore at the end when I was playing that, I basically had already accepted that I lost, and um, I could have played for Differential, I had Volt Switch on Mew, I could have Volt Switch the Azumarill even, and then I could have lost 1-0. There's so many situations and scenarios that could have happened, um, but I guess you can call that I misplayed the end, but I... You can also say that um, I just 
didn't, you know, I just kind of was giving him the win because I felt like he deserved it. He played fantastically, and he definitely deserved that win. Um, his links will be in the description below, and I definitely encourage you to go check out his channel and all his stuff because he's a fantastic, fantastic battler. Um, I learned a lot from this match. I still need to get better at um, at managing the end game. It's still something that I struggle with every now and then, as well as I just need to uh, make sure that I have enough coverage for things on this team. I know I didn't have coverage for Kaka Grigas. There's not much that I could have done. There's just not much on my team that can do that. But, I mean, adding a fire move to something like Mew, like having Flamethrower instead of whatever else I had, I don't know, like, it, you know, it just would have been it would have been better in my opinion. So, you know, things like that. Hindsight's 2020, but I think we, we did decently. Next week, we are taking on the most broken team in the history of broken teams in uh, Eric Ashinakai and the Bristol Bidoofs, Bristol City Bidoofs, I don't know what his thing is, um, but that's going to be fun, and by fun I mean we're going to cry a lot, but it's going to be fun, and um, yeah, that should be all that. I'm also going to leave links to the TBU um, in the in the description because the TBU channel does things like power rankings and recaps and all that fun stuff, so you guys should go check out all the links and all that stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, if so, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys on the next time. So, thanks for watching, and until the next time, guys, stay sly.